Hey gang, AV here. Welcome to my review of the Haya Toys Exquisite Mini Alien vs. Predator AVP Unmasked Scar figure. Here he is in the packaging. As you can see, it's a window box with the figure and some of his accessories visible there in the bubble. Um, you also have a product shot of the figure out of the packaging right there on the front. Um, there's a graphic here with an alien and a graphic of a predator on that side. Um, a little bit of a... Uh, warnings and stuff like that there um it just says avp alien vs predator on the top avp alien vs predator on the bottom there's a picture of an alien on the side with avp and a picture of a predator on that side with avp on the back you've got a whole bunch of legal stuff as well as uh two product shots of the figure out of the packaging with some of his accessories so that's all i'm going to say about the packaging let's open him up I have already opened him prior to the video um, and used a hair dryer to heat up some of his joints so that they would not be frozen and possibly break on me, which is something I recommend to everybody do with their Hyatt toys. Um, here is the insert card that was behind the figure, which I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think that's a great graphic and that's something I could probably stick in a doorway or something and then just have the hallway leading up to it to make it look like it opens up into that chamber. I mean, that, that's a great graphic. Figure comes in the two-part shell here, so let's open it up. Hopefully without spilling out all his contents. Um, some of the stuff came taped onto the, uh, the tray, which I actually removed the tape for the sake of the review but it's obvious why it was taped in because they can go all over the place if you're not careful. So anyway, um, first things first, he does come with a, an extra set of hands. He has a more relaxed right hand and a splayed out left hand. Uh, we'll look at the left hand first. Let me get my exacto, or no, actually I could probably use this. All right. There you go. Very small peg hole on the bottom of the hand. But it's a decent sculpt and some nice paint apps on it too. So it's just a flat brown on the one side and, and peach on the other, but still. Looking at his right hand now has a bit more gradation to it. It's brown on that side. On this side kind of goes to an orange and then a peach. It's pretty cool. All right, get them back in the tray before I lose them. Uh, he also has his throwing disc, which looks more like the clave from uh, Krull, the movie Krull. Um, I've mentioned, I should mention it right now, this is basically the same exact figure as the other Scar figure. Um, just has a different head sculpt. But uh, knowing that, there is nowhere that I've been able to find to actually stow this, like on other Predator figures. Usually they have the uh, disc um, holster on, the, on their thigh. This guy doesn't have that, and I'm not sure where else I could, I could stow this thing for him. Um, he can hold it in his hands, which is nice. hand here there you go so yes he can hold it as you can see putting that back um, he has two staffs one collapsed and one fully uh, extended so we'll have a look at the extended one first nice long staff with some nice detail on there. Seems to be like some silver and gold um, with a black wash over it. Very nice. Definitely looks pretty good. Comes to a sharp point there at this end. Pretty cool. Um, the sa this is technically the same staff, it's just collapsed. Although this has got a point on both ends. I wonder why the other, the other thing didn't. It's weird. It didn't look like it was busted. Just doesn't look like it was there. Huh. 
Ano yan? I certainly don't see the uh, an extra piece floating around in the packaging anywhere. Nice pieces though. Um, he also comes with his figure base, which I just had out. There we go. It's basically uh, modeled after a steel grate. Um, this has a nice brown, um, dirty, rusty um, wash over it, which looks pretty good. Um, these notches on the sides here are used to facilitate these two H-shaped brackets that, that it also comes with. Stick them in these so, uh, in these slots here, and then you can actually connect the bases to other bases to make a floor. And as you can see, and you can do that all the way around. Obviously, I uh, didn't follow the pattern that way. There you go. And as you can see, it held pretty securely with just one, too, so. Imagine what you could do with two. <laughs> All right, I'm done being a goofball. All right, let's put this away. Before I lose any of this stuff. And have a look at the figure himself. Now, as I mentioned, he is more or less the same figure that we've gotten previously, um, just with a new head sculpt. He has a screaming head screaming face with no mask um, same rubbery uh, um, dreads that we're used to seeing um, I do like the fact that he has uh, the scar though painted pretty proudly on his forehead which is nice uh, the body and everything are the, is the same buck that we got for all the other predators in this in this line as well as the original scar um, just minor, minor differences like uh, the gauntlets and whatnot, and the ornamentation, but the, the overall body is the same. So, he does have, for articulation, starting with his cannon, um, which is up here on his shoulder, and this is one of my favorite things about the figure, frankly. Um, it's held together, it's got two hinges which are pinned in, and that's awesome. And it also ends at a ball joint, which is what the cannon itself is attached to. So you can actually get the cannon to rotate all the way around and pivot up and down just on that ball joint. That combined with the two pinned hinges really get, let you get this wherever the hell you need it to go in order to follow his line of sight or even just tuck it behind his back. Popped it right off the ball joint there. Yeah, goes right back on. But still, I love that. I love this accessory. I think it's great. Um, downside to it, though, is it does kind of get in the way of his head articulation because it's kind of bulky there on his back, and his dreads want to go all over the place. So, because of that, I would only do side by side with his head. Um, he also can look up and down, which is nice. Arms are a little tricky too with the way the figure is constructed. Um, they don't go farther down to his sides than that. Um, he's permanently in like a, a muscle builder who skips like day kind of stance with his arms sticking out constantly. Um, it kind of gets on my nerves a little bit, but it, it is what it is. Um, he does have these shoulder pads, which attach to the actual chest and not the arm. So because of that, and because they're a soft rubbery plastic and you don't want to rip them off, um, I would only go front and back with the arm when spinning it. I would not try to do a full 360. And that can be said for both sides. Uh, the more you mess with it, the more likely these are gonna rip off. And you don't want that to happen, so. He does have an upper bicep swivel, which you can do all the way around. Just gotta watch the uh, the armor again. Um, 
His elbows are pretty impressive. They have a double joint, but it doesn't look like it. Um, so he has a single joint there, but the, uh, the other half of the joint is actually hidden in his bicep here, or his tricep. So you can actually get that to bend as well to get some extra motion out of that, which is pretty cool. I like that a lot. The gauntlet is a separate piece. So as you can see, you can move the gauntlet to suit where, wherever you need it to go. Uh, the hands are on tiny little ball joints. So you get some wiggle room and you can obviously twist them around. Um, he does have some chest articulation, but the way his armor is constructed, it is very limited because you don't want to rip anything because he has that connecting piece from his chest, from his back all the way to his backside and here from his chest all the way down to his belt. So you really, it is connected and you don't want to mess with it too much because it does slide out. I guess you could do that, okay. Is it the back? Does the back do that too? No, the back is permanently attached. So it's the, I knew it was one side at least. So you don't want to mess with it too much because you don't want to rip that. The chest thankfully is loose. So you can actually, it's pretty forgiving. You just adjust it after you get the figure posed. But he's got a good range of motion there at the diaphragm joint right underneath the rib cage. He also has a twist here at the waist, which gives you some side to side. But again, I wouldn't try a full 360. Slide this back up in there. Um, legs are basically the same story. Uh, these thigh pieces are connected to his belt, so a little bit limited there. They're rubbery and forgiving, but you still don't want to go too far. So you can kick his leg up about that high. Back a little, but not much. Um, there is no thigh cut. He can't bring his legs in about this far and out about that far. He has a nice hidden knee joint, however. As you can see, you can't really see the knee at all. You can bend it single knee, single joint there, so exposes the knee, and then Again, same as the arms, it's hidden up in the thigh. So you can actually bring his knee, all, his heel all the way back, which is awesome. Um, ankles, they can go from side to side, a full 360 if you force it. And they also have a hinge if you force it, but the overall design of the feet, like with these, uh, with these horns or teeth sticking out and the, like the back of his heel armor here, uh, it's you're really not going to get much out of that, but it is there. I mean, you do have the hinge there. So all in all, his outfit does hinder his articulation. He is kind of bulky in the arms, not letting you put his his hands down to his sides, which is a little unfortunate. Um, I didn't show it off actually, but these don't collapse like they do on other Predator figures. So you can't slide these farther into his gauntlet or pull them farther out. They are permanently in that um, deployed mode right there. So all in all, uh, he's, a, he's a cool figure, but he's not the best Predator that we've gotten yet. Um, I do like the head sculpt on him, though, and he is a, a rememberable character from the film. So we've got him. Um, size comparison. Now, here he is next to a vintage collection Luke Skywalker. As you can see, he towers over Luke. Just like he should, I believe he's supposed to be close to seven feet tall, if I'm not mistaken, in the movies. So, makes sense that a, a short figure like Luke would, wouldn't quite measure up. Same could be said for a, another three and three quarter inch figure, a vintage G.I. Joe figure, Snake Eyes. Does not measure up to him as well. Um, more modern G.I. Joe figure, closer to four inches, the Dower General Cobra Trooper. As you can see, getting there, close, but still no cigar. A true four inch figure, Boss Fight Studio Blank. Marvel Universe Captain America. And Master Chief, 
was actually maybe a hair taller. Hmm. All right. So all in all, that's been my review of the uh, Haya Toys uh, Alien vs. Predator Unmasked Scar figure. Um, if you're a fan of the movie and you want him unmasked, this is a decent figure, but again, not the best. Um, not the best Predator we've gotten. Um, still kind of cool, though. Uh, still has its pluses and minuses. Uh, if you want to pick one up, I did pick mine up at Big Bad Toy Store. He was about about uh, the 20 to 21 22 $22 range, somewhere around there. Um, pretty reasonable. Uh, personally, I think the, the Aliens are, are a better buy, but especially if you already have one or two of the Predators. But, you know, that's on you. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what to get. I'm just going to give you my opinion as to how how worthwhile it might be for you or whether or not you may or may not be disappointed with it. Um, anyhow, this has been AV. If you like this video, check out my channel. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.